All right, what's going on, you guys? Uh, Cooster here, just talking uh, NHL playoffs. I said I'd kind of, I wrote my predictions down in the comment or the description of the last video, but these are all the non-Sharks uh, playoff series. Just kind of a quick breakdown of what I think is going to happen, because uh, some of you might be wondering what am I thinking. And <laughs> believe me, that's actually a question I've been getting on Twitter quite a bit. So uh, I'll talk about each series, just kind of in an impromptu fashion, and uh, I'll let you know what I think. So I'll start off with the Western Conference. I won't talk about the Sharks Kings. I have already done that. So, uh, starting off, uh, you have the Stars versus the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, this is one of those series where you could say, yeah, the Stars are going to get very valuable playing experience. A very young team, a very exciting team. And they really benefited well from that Tyler Sagan trade. And Boston has two, which I'll get a little later. But, uh, very, very in intriguing team in the Stars. Very young with Jamie Benn. I think this will be his first playoff game. Like, half of the Stars roster will be playing in their first playoff game, uh, this coming week. Uh, the Ducks, regular season, Bruce Boudreaux, always doing well in the regular season. It's very tempting to pick against the Bruce Boudreaux's team, at least in the but in the first round they should win this. On paper, the Ducks now have a, a full year of experience under their belts from last year. They should be well poised for this coming uh, playoffs, and who knows uh, what could happen. They're still, the Ducks are more loaded on paper. Just The Stars are a young, intriguing team, but I'm going to say Ducks in five. Going on to the next one, uh, I believe that is the Wild and the Avalanche. You know, the Avalanche are the team that's young. They got some players like Gabriel Landeskog, who you can build around. Very intriguing scoring. Uh, Varlamov, of course, has stood on his head. There, there are those games where they don't have defense, but they've asked their goalie to win games for them, and they have. They've done it more times than not. Unfortunately, that is the biggest problem, and I think that's going to be a downfall in the big picture. You know, Patrick Waugh probably should get Coach of the Year if I'm going to because the Avalanche were the only surprise team out of the 16 playoff teams. I didn't think the Avalanche stood a chance at making the playoffs. thought their defense was bad, which it still is. But Varlamov played well enough for them. Uh, on the other side, I got there's the Wild, the team that's quietly been in the playoffs, but they're still kind of a boring team that can't score enough. Uh, that's the biggest problem there. Uh, with that being said, I think there's enough experience on the Wild, and I think they can win ugly in the fashion that they can did it in seven. I know it's unattractive. The Avalanche should, on paper, win, but I don't like these teams that have all offense and no defense. That's my biggest problem. But the Avalanche have a good core to build around. They're going to be better in the long term. So just in the short term, I think def no defense is going to hurt them later. Going on, the last Western Series, Blackhawks Blues. This one's going to ruin everybody's uh, you know bracket if you're building a bracket or so. Uh... Blackhawks loaded. Blues are just as loaded as well. Blues, of course, are the team that's really trying to win, go all in, per se. They, they get a guy like Ryan Miller at the deadline. Uh, of course, the Blues, they have fallen off a bit. We know both teams are loaded in terms of players and skill players and all of that. But the Blues have fallen off in the second half, uh, or the last few weeks of the season. I think that's going to carry to the playoffs. I think the Blackhawks know what it takes. That They already know have won before. They should, I think the Blackhawks are going to take this game in five, take the series in five. It it might seem a little uh, bad to write off the Blues, but I don't like a team that's cold. I do not like a team that's cold that's coming into the playoffs. So Blackhawks in five, I, I like their grit. I like pretty much everything around them, even though they haven't played the greatest hockey either in the last month. Still, Blackhawks in five. Moving on to the East. Uh, you got Boston, Detroit. Detroit is a team that... You, they, they're they always in the playoffs ever since uh, if you were born in 1990 you, they've been in the playoffs every year for you and uh, even people who were born in the mid 80s have not seen the Red Wings not in the playoffs it's it's one of those things this was a team that was dinged up they were injured everywhere and they still found a way to make it uh, which is a testament to the organization so Red Wings uh, squeak in as the last team uh, in I think they were the 8th team by, by a seeding they're up against a Boston team that's pretty loaded top to bottom. I, as said before, they benefited from the Sagan trade just as much. They got good supporting cast. They got plenty of guys you can score, like Brad Marchand. And they, they should be fine. I like Tuka Rask way more than Jimmy Howard. And uh, I think Howard is just an average goalie. Been a good season for the Red Wings because they made it, but I, I don't think they're good enough. Unless the veterans like Zetterberg, like Datsuk, suddenly just come out of nowhere and start tearing it up. I don't think Boston 
is, is intimidated by that. Boston should win this game, series in five. Uh, next, next one, I believe, that is the Habs and the Lightning. Thing is, the Lightning, I think, have all the skill players. They have a nice uh, scoring depth up and down. I guess a guy like Palat out of nowhere, uh, player who've had a breakout season. And, of course, the staff comes down the cap again. No more Marty St. Louis, but you got Ryan Callahan in there, a good two-way player. Uh, but the Habs, they seem to be the team that can ask a goalie to win the games or win, win a series for them. I mean, last time the Habs were in the dance uh, against uh, Boston a few years ago, Carey Price played well, and I know he didn't play well last postseason, but I, I think the Habs have what it takes. I think M Michelle Therrien knows what he's doing. The issue is, of course, Ben Bishop. He's had a great year, but he's not healthy. I think if Ben Bishop was healthy, I would have picked the Lightning. I'm going to say Habs in seven because I think the Habs just know what it what it's all about in the playoffs. The Lightning, at least under this regime, I know it's been a few years since they were last there with Guy Boucher. Now it's another guy. I'm going to say I'm going to say the Habs in seven. Going on uh, the next series, I believe that one. It's where. Uh, it's the Rangers and the Flyers. It's a very, uh, definitely, this is crazy to think. Both the teams have not seen each other in the playoffs since 1997. Wayne Gretzky was on the Rangers. Brian Leach was on the Rangers. I believe the Legion of Doom, not Legion of Boom, was on the Flyers. And that was the conference finals. So that was Wayne Gretzky's last playoff year in his career and last time these two saw each other. Uh, the Flyers got a lot of scoring depth. People will pick, think the Flyers have that ability to go up and down. They have the grit. As I said, they have multiple guys who've scored 20 goals or they're even just 15 goals. Plenty of guys with depth. They've, had, they've made some changes, including uh, obviously a head coaching change very early into the season. Uh, if y'all didn't know, Philadelphia has changed every head coach in the calendar year of 2013 because Andy Reid turned into Chip Kelly. Doug Collins turned into a different coach for the 76ers. Uh, uh, Charlie, Charlie Emanuel turned into Ryan Sandberg, and then now Peter Laviolette took over another coach, uh, or became a different coach in uh, Philadelphia. But they're doing all right. It, it's weird to think they're committed to now a guy like Andrew McDonald and a guy like Steve Mason. But it's working for them. <laughs> Whatever's going, that buyout of Brzezgalov, <laughs> such a silly buyout. Luckily, it don't count against the cap. Rangers, on the other hand, is a team that still is not the greatest scoring team, but they don't need to. They have a t guy named Henrik Lundqvist who can stop them. And I think the Rangers, in a seven-game series, I'm going to take Henrik Lundqvist any time over, over Steve Mason. Just I don't trust the other guy. That's just how I see it. Uh, the Rangers still, they don't score the greatest, but the Flyers defensively, I'm just not so sure. It's one of those where I don't trust the goaltending. I think Steve Mason can make some brain farts. We can criticize Marty St. Louis for only scoring once, I think, in this Rana Rangers uniform, but I think they're going to tear it up. I think there's the time where the Rangers, uh, they have a nice supporting balance attack, even though there's no Rick Nash dominating the stats. I'm going to say Rangers in six. Lastly, it's the Blue Jackets and the Penguins, and I think that the Penguins, much better team, much easier to pick them. I think the uh, Blue Jackets... Sure, it's nice. Hope they can get a playoff win in the series. But I, I think that the uh, Penguins are much more loaded, even though they've been hurt at times. With that being said, the Jackets are a fun and interesting team to watch because they're defensive, they're gritty. They're a team that can grind out wins. Uh, they're nice and blue color, and I'll, I'll give them that. that. That's a nice blue color thing. It would be nice to see them win at least one game because they're the only team in, in the NHL without a franchise uh, playoff win in, in their history. So... I, I'm going to say Penguins in five, but it would be nice to see the Blue Jackets get one. How much y'all think?